today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic of chemical bonding which includes metallic bonding covalent bonding and ionic bonding basically there are three major types of bonding number 1 ionic bonding which involves the transfer of valence electrons and it forms ionic compounds number 2 metallic bonding and number 3 covalent bonding which involves the sharing of electrons and it forms molecules octet and duplet rules are very important rules in chemistry the tendency of atoms to acquire eight electronic configuration in their valent shell when bonding is called octet rule the tendency of some atoms to acquire two electronic configuration in their valent shell when bonding is known as duplet rule. During ionic bonding, the metal atoms lose electrons and form positive ions and non-metal atoms gain electrons and form negative ions. Ionic bond is always formed between metal cations and non-metal anions. The oppositely charged ions stick together like magnets. Metallic bonding is always formed between two metals, pure metals, for example solid, gold, silver, lead, etc. During covalent bonding, pairs of electrons are shared between two non-metal atoms to acquire the electronic configuration of a noble gas. Atoms combine to form various types of substances, but what holds them together? Fundamentally, some forces of attraction hold atoms together in substances. These forces are called chemical bonds. Basically, the forces of attraction that lead to chemical bonding between atoms are electrical in nature. Electronic structure of an atom helps us to understand how atoms are held together to form substances. Atoms other than noble gases have a tendency to react with other elements. These elements are very reactive because they tend to gain stability by losing or gaining electrons when atoms gain or lose electron they acquire the electronic configuration of next noble gas element atoms can also acquire the configuration of next noble gas element by sharing electrons so now we will discuss about the three major types of chemical bonds the first one is known as an ionic bond which involves the donation of electrons from a metal atom to a non-metal atom for example in the below example in NaCl an electron is transferred from sodium atom to a chlorine atom and an ionic bond is formed due to the electrostatic attraction between sodium ion and chlorine ion sodium will lose the electron and will become positively charged and chlorine will gain the electron and become negatively charged and as a result there will be an attraction established between sodium and chlorine and this attraction is termed as an ionic bond. During covalent bond formation, two non-metal atoms will share electrons to complete their octet and duplets. For example, oxygen atom will share electron to form to complete its octet uh, in order to complete eight electrons, and hydrogen will share one electron and in order to complete its duplet. Whereas in metallic bonding, electrons are like a sea of electrons present and they move freely between metal atoms there are positively charged metal atoms are present and electrons are like a sea of electron is present for example fe Hydro uh, covalent bonding is formed between uh, water molecules and ionic bonding is formed in nacl sodium chloride <coughs> now we will discuss about the types of chemical bonding up which will be decided upon which thing reacts with which thing 
if a metal reacts with a non-metal then an ionic bond will be formed and it will involve electron transfer if a non-metal reacts with non-metal a covalent compound will be formed and it will be localized and it involves electron shearing whereas when a metal reacts with a metal a metallic bond will be formed it will be delocalized and it will involve electron pooling A chemical bond is a force that holds atoms together in a compound. There are two main types of chemical bonds which include ionic and covalent bonds. In an ionic bond, the electron moves from one atom to another atom. For example, in NaCl, first of all, the electron moves from sodium atom to chlorine atom therefore ions are formed a positively charged sodium and a negatively charged chlorine ions are formed which will attract each other and are electronically bonded together whereas in a covalent bond electrons cannot move independently so there are shared pairs of electrons between atoms which are bonded together by chemical bonds Now let's discuss some of the most important properties of ionic compounds. First of all, they form crystalline solids and they have high melting and boiling points. They conduct electricity when they are melted. Many of them are soluble in water. They consist of strong attractions between positive and negative ions and they are mostly brittle and hard. So what actually are ionic bonds? Ionic bonds are bonds that occur when a metal gives away a valence electron and becomes a cation and a non-metal gains a valence electron and becomes an anion. In other words, it's a bond between a metal and a non-metal which involves the transfer of electrons. There are basically two ways to show ionic bonding. The first way is known as electron dot method in which the valence electrons are shown by dots. Like sodium contains one valence electron so only one dot is represented whereas chlorine contains seven valence electrons so seven dots are represented. The second method of showing the Ionic bonding is known as crisscross method and it is shown below where, where the charges on the ions are represented in opposite in a crisscross way like Al contains plus 3 charge and O contains minus 2 charge. Now what will happen in the neutral compound Al2O3 Al will have the opposite charge of O which is 2 and O oxygen will contain the charge of aluminium there is a cross arrangement so be sure to reduce when necessary to reduce to the lowest term to the empirical formula sometimes compounds only involve two elements these are known as binary compounds in order to name binary compounds first of all write the name of the metal first in capitalized manner then write the name of the non-metal in lower case change the ending of the non-metal to i for example nacl is known as sodium chloride mgcl2 is known as magnesium chloride these are the methods to name ionic compounds Covalent bonds form between non-metals. It is the attraction they form when shearing electrons. Once a covalent bond is formed, the resulting compound is referred to as a molecule. Single, double or triple bonds can form between two non-metals. For example, in the given diagram, single bond is formed between two hydrogen atoms by shearing of a pair of electrons. Double bond involves the sharing of two pairs of electrons. One pair of electron contains two electrons. Triple bond involves the sharing of three pairs of electrons. For example, in N2, 
Double bonds example includes O2 and single bond includes H2. Electrons are not always shared equally between the atoms in a covalent bond. So, the polar molecule is a molecule that has slightly positive end and a slightly negative end. Non-polar molecule is a molecule in which electrons are shared equally. For example, water is a polar molecule. Here are some of the properties of covalent bonds. First of all, they do not dissolve in water. They are soft. Covalent bonds are poor conductors of heat and electricity. They have lower melting and boiling points. Covalent compounds include solids, liquids or gases. Strong bonds between atoms but weak attraction between molecules. In order to draw covalent bonds, first of all, place the element that is least represented in the middle and radiate all other elements around the central atom. For example, in HF, F is a central atom. In H2O, O is a central atom. NH3, N is a central atom. And in CH4, C is a central atom. So, in the second step, only place valence electrons that will be shared between two atoms. For example, in this case of water molecule, oxygen has six valence electrons, whereas hydrogen has one valence electron. Any electrons not being shared must go on the outside of the atom. Connect shared electrons with dashes. Covalent bonds do not reduce, like we do not reduce the formula of covalent bonds, whereas in ionic bonds the formula do reduce. For example, in the above figure we can see that the shared electrons are shown with dashes. For example, in hydrogen and fluorine, one pair of electron is shared and it is denoted by a dash and in H2O the oxygen molecule shares bond with one hydrogen and one hydrogen. Two hydrogen molecules are shared to make water molecule neutral. Sometimes multiple bonds must be formed for example double bond which exists between two oxygen atoms to form an oxygen gas. During double bond formation, atoms share two electron pairs. One electron pair contains two electrons, whereas two electron pairs contain four electrons. Triple bond involves atoms that share three pairs of electrons. One pair of electron contains two electrons, so three pair of electron contains six electrons. For example, in nitrogen molecule and two molecule, three bonds are formed by the sharing of three electron pairs. Whereas in oxygen molecule or two molecule, two electron pairs are involved and they form O2 molecule. Now we will discuss some of the properties of molecular or covalent compounds. They are made from two or more non-metals and they consist of molecules, not ions. For example, water molecule, which is a covalent compound. Three models of chemical bonding include First of all, covalent bonding, which involves many atoms joined together by chemical bonds. For example, chlorine and bromine joined by sharing of electrons. 
The second model is uh, about metallic bonding in which many atoms, for example sodium atoms, are dispersed in an electron C. And the third uh, model of chemical bonding is about ionic bonding which involves the transfer of electrons and many atoms form ions like sodium ions are, first of all there was a sodium metal which changed into sodium ion there was a chlorine atom which changed into chlorine ion sodium was neutral now the sodium has become positive ion whereas before chlorine was neutral but now it has become negative ion so the first of all there were many atoms now they become many ions and by now by ionic bonding they form crystal lattices for example of sodium chloride table salt lattice is an example of ionic bonding in ionic bonding anions and cations have opposite charges they attract one another by electrostatic forces compounds that consist of ions joined by electrostatic forces are known as ionic compounds the total positive charge of cations must be equal to the negative charge of anions this is because ionic compounds as a whole are electrically neutral The covalent bonding model is now to be discussed. Each atom in a covalent bond counts the shared pair of electrons as belonging entirely to itself. An electron pair is that part of an atom's valence shell but not involved in bonding is called as a lone pair or unshared pair the lone pair or unshared pair of electron is not involved in bonding a lone pair is in includes two electrons it is a pair of electron now bond order is the number of electron pairs which are being shared between any two bonded atoms any molecule having a bond order of 1 contains a single bond for example H2 double bonds has a bond order of 2 and triple bond has a bond order of 3 single bond bond order of 1 for example H2 um, for example CH2 double bond CH2 has a bond order of 2 and N2 gas has a bond order of 3 because nitrogen molecules are joined by 3 bonds three covalent bonds unlike ionic bonds which transferred electrons covalent bonds share electrons here we can see that sodium atom loses electron and becomes a positive ion whereas chlorine atom gains the electron and becomes negatively charged now due to electrostatic attraction between positively charged sodium and negatively charged chlorine the opposites attract and uh, due to electrostatic attraction an ionic bond is formed between sodium and chlorine now the opposites will attract and a neutral sodium chloride molecule will be formed whereas in covalent bonding it involves the sharing of electrons between two atoms the atoms are shared and both complete their octet so here are some of the examples of covalent compounds for example water sugar crystals plastic gasoline oils and fats ear lpg nail paint remover diamond plastic bottles etc during covalent bonds electrons are shared between two atoms each covalent bond between atoms involves two electrons So if atoms are similar in negativity, then the electrons will be sheared. So if we discuss the example below, C2F4. 
here the electrons two electron pairs are shared so it is a double bond covalent bonds involve the sharing of electrons here electrons are shared in this example whereas in an ionic bond electron is transferred from one atom to another and positive and negative ions are formed and consequently an electrostatic force is generated which binds these ions together so how can we represent covalent bonds so there are basically two ways to represent the formation of a covalent bond first of all we can represent the covalent bond formation between two atoms using electron dot and electron cross symbols for the atoms and the resulting molecule which you can see in this diagram of water molecule in which ox the electrons of oxygen atom are shown by dot and the electrons of hydrogen atom are shown by crosses also we can represent the formation of a covalent bond by dash as in the diagram of water molecule in the right side the shared pair of electron is represented by dash in the molecule as we have already discussed that the valence electrons are represented by dots just to understand sharing of electrons we represent valence electrons in one atom by dots and in the other atom by crosses however remember that all electrons are identical and cannot be differentiated so here are some important terminologies that a covalent bond is formed by mutual sharing of electrons between two atoms Pair of electrons which are not shared between atoms are known as unshared pairs or lone pairs. Covalent bond that is formed by the sharing of one electron pair is known as a single covalent bond, whereas a double covalent bond is the bond that is formed by sharing of two electron pairs. Triple covalent bonds are the bonds that involve three shared pairs of electrons. So now let's discuss the electron cross and dot structures for simple covalent molecules containing single covalent bonds. For example, in case of H2O water molecule, each oxygen atom has six valence electrons and each hydrogen atom has one valence electron. So oxygen atom now needs two electrons to complete octet. Each hydrogen needs one electron to complete duplet. Oxygen is a central atom and will form two single bonds with hydrogen atom. Now you have to arrange hydrogen atoms around oxygen because oxygen is a central atom and connect them by a pair of electrons, one dot and one cross. So here is a diagram of water molecule where oxygen is a central atom. The electrons of oxygen are shown by crosses whereas the electrons of hydrogen atom are shown by dots. And this is the level structure of water molecule where the covalent bonds are shown by dashes. Now if we are say to draw electron cross and dot structures for the following molecule of CO2 which is a component of air and is responsible for a greenhouse effect. So this carbon has four electrons in the valence shell. It needs four electrons to complete its octet. Octet means to have eight electrons in the valence shell. So each oxygen atom has six electrons and needs two electrons to have an octet. Carbon will be the central atom and you have to arrange oxygen atoms around it. Since carbon needs 4 electrons and there are only 2 oxygen atoms, so it will share its 2 electrons with each oxygen atom. So the electrons, valence electrons of carbon are shown by dots and the valence electron of oxygen atoms are shown by crosses. There are 2 oxygen atoms and carbon is a central atom. In the right side we can see the level structure of ca uh, carbon dioxide with, where the covalent bonds are shown by dashes. Here is a very accurate definition of a covalent bond. A covalent bond is a bond which is formed by mutual sharing of electrons between two atoms. And now the most important point 
is always remember atoms are trying to complete their valence shell in order to gain the electronic configuration of noble gas elements. The number of electrons the atom needs is the total number of bonds they can make. For example, if you check how many electrons does hydrogen need to complete its duplet or how many electrons does oxygen need to complete its octet. And by guessing these things, we can count how many bonds an atom can make. For example, hydrogen needs one electron to complete its duplet. It already has one electron in its valence shell. So the maximum number of bonds that hydrogen can make is one. And oxygen needs two electrons. So the maximum number of bonds that oxygen can make is two. So it makes a double bond double covalent bond now recognize the following components having an ionic compound how can you tell that mgo magnesium oxide has an ionic bond here are some tips to solve this question first of all the metal atom will lose electrons to form cations and non-metal atom gains electrons to form anions the number of electrons lost by metal atoms of group 1a 2a and 3a equals the group number whereas the number of electrons gained by the non-metals equals to 8 minus group number find the simplest ratio of cations to anions to identify the compound so here is the solution of this question. In magnesium oxide, magnesium is a metal and oxygen is a non-metal. Since magnesium atom has two electrons in the outermost shell, it loses two electrons to form an ion. Oxygen atom has six electrons in the outermost shell, so it will gain two electrons to form an ion. In this way, both atoms acquire the nearest noble gas configuration. For every ion, you need one ion. Chemical formula of resulting compound is MgO. Therefore, MgO is an ionic compound. So, in the above electron and dot structure of magnesium oxide, you can see that the valence shell of magnesium has two electrons, whereas oxygen has six electrons. The magnesium will denote two electrons to oxygen and form ion. Both these ions opposite ions will now attract each other and due to this electrostatic attraction an ionic bond will be formed between magnesium and oxygen where magnesium is metal and oxygen is a non-metal and an ionic bond will be formed so here is a diagrammatic representation of ionic bonding in magnesium oxide where magnesium atom has an electronic configuration of 2H2. Uh, this means that the outermost shell of magnesium atom will have two electrons whereas oxygen atom has an electronic configuration of 2 6. It means that the oxygen atom will have six electrons in the outermost shell which is the valence shell. So in order to form ions, magnesium will lose its two electrons which are in the valence shell and it will transfer these electrons to oxygen atom because it needs two electrons to complete its octet. After losing two electrons, magnesium will become plus two ion because it has lost two electrons. Uh, because electrons are negatively charged, when two negative charges are removed, magnesium will gain a positive two charge. And oxygen will gain because oxygen has gained two electrons it will form a negative ion and oxygen will gain minus two charge because it has gained two negative ions which are electrons and so strong electrostatic for forces of attraction will exist between ions of opposite charges to form an ionic bond magnesium has plus two charge and oxygen has minus two charge these opposite charges will form electrostatic forces which are known as ionic bond Magnesium plus 2 ion and oxygen minus 2 ions are formed. Uh, these will gain stable gas configuration of neon, which is a noble gas, and stable full outer shells of electrons will be formed. And due to this bonding, there will be an ionic bond formed between these opposite charges, which is known as an ionic bond. Ionic bond will be formed between magnesium and oxygen due to electrostatic attraction of opposite charges. 
which are Mg plus 2 and oxygen minus 2. Now let's quickly recap the summary what we have learned today. First of all, an octet is a set of 8. In order to gain stability, atoms tend to gain electronic configuration of nearest noble gas. The tendency of atoms to acquire 8 electronic configuration in their valence shell when binding is called octet rule. Ionic bonds are formed between two atoms when one atom loses electrons and the other atom gains these electrons. The forces of attraction that binds oppositely charged ions is known as ionic bond. Ionic compounds have high melting points. They also conduct electricity in molten state. A bond that is formed by the sharing of electrons between two atoms is known as a covalent bond. A covalent bond can be single, double or triple. Now let's discuss the exam paper linkage of today's topic. The, these are the two questions which have been asked and these are very important that KCl and MgF2 are two ionic compounds. You have to discuss the bond formation in each of these and also draw the electron and cross models. And you have to describe single, double and triple bond formations in covalent bonds and also you have to state examples of each. And these are the questions in paper number two. You have to describe the formation of anions in bromine and phosphorus ions. In 2022, these questions were asked about ionic and covalent bonding. That what is the octet rule? And you have to draw electron and cross models for CO2 and H2S. And you have to describe the ways in which ion bonds are formed in KCl and MgO using electron dot structures. Here you have to answer the question where how covalent bonds are formed. Describe the single, double and triple bond formation between non-metallic atoms. And you also have to draw structures. 